Right, this is my first aid kit um, off the solid to put together because when you're out in the field and God forbid something does go wrong, the last thing you want is what I've done before, which is a tiny little packy tin with a few plasters and a, a few other things and a few painkillers. It's just not enough. Just picture it, you're out on your own in the woods and you trip over and you cut yourself quite bad. <laughs> It could be game over just for something that simple but there's no need to be you need to give yourself a good chance of surviving really so i decided to get myself a maxpedition fr1 medic pouch as you can see it's a a good reputation um the maxpedition stuff um initial um inspection of the pouch when i got it in the post wasn't that pleased if i'm totally honest because um you're, you're spending 40 pound plus I don't know how much dollars that is in the US, but it's quite a considerable amount. And if you look closely, you know, look at these. Now these loops had um, um, bungee straps of a little toggle release for doing all sorts of weird and wonderful, you know, things you can attach to it. I decided to um, remove these because it's not really needed for the purpose I want. But if you look closely at the, the quality there, you know, the distance there between the distance there and that actual loop, is actually underneath it's not really that good I'm not really impressed if I'm totally honest um, but you know it's hard use gear as it says on the label and it doesn't appear to be that good quality if I'm brutally honest but all that aside it seems more than enough up to the job I like the design because basically what I want to do is have this in my Bergen on the front pouch on the the PLC pouch and if I need it quickly I can unzip it Grab that and pull it straight out, and I've got access to all of the wonderful goodies inside. Now I just weighed this um, with its contents as it is right now, fully loaded, and it's 800 grams, which isn't too bad considering you can save your life or save a friend's life with what's in here. Um, obviously, I've got my blood group, which is O positive, which I put on the front because you never know <laughs> if someone needs to know what blood group you are. So, all right, let's get through and um, open her up and see what's inside. All right, the pouch is now open, as you can see, and um, I quite like this idea. I don't know if you can see that. But um, basically, if you want to pull the whole thing like an L shape, all you do is so you pull that along and you hold the toggle and you just push it and it stays in place. So you get something like that. It just supports itself. It's perfect. It's really, really good. You can see more. So... I'm going to just go through it now, what I've got in there. Now, bearing in mind, this is um, my first attempt at a, a quite serious um, overview on my first aid kit that I plan to uh, take out in the field. So, the first things first is your torch. Now, it's very, very important, but you've got to be very careful with these torches because you can quite easily just, it will knock something in there and it will stay on and run its batteries out. So I've turned it unscrewed it nearly all the way off and with about three threads left and it sort of clicks which is quite good so you can like just keep screwing it back on like this and it will uh, it will just work like that and if you just left it like that it's a good chance it could you know burn itself out so i just unwind it nearly all the way to the end and just lock her off so i've got a good chance of it um, actually staying charged up First things first, your trauma shears. You simply must have a pair of these in your first aid kit, you must. If you gash your leg open or your mate's probably done a big slice up his arm for whatever reason, you can't just funny about trying to get his jacket off or trying to get your trousers off, especially if you're on your own and you're in shock. These are really tough and they'll just rip straight through clothing, no problem at all. They're cheap as well, you can pick these up for about two pound, you know. It can go up to a fiver, but if you look carefully, they're all made from the same company. So, you know, why pay more? They're exactly the same. I've checked. I've known someone who spent £6.99 and I've spent £1.99 and they're identical. Absolutely the same. So, you know, don't be fooled. So, that's the first item that you should have in your first aid kit. Um, loads and loads of these. Now, what I've done with these, it may be a bit naughty, but they, they've quite got a lot of air inside these packages. So what I've done, the first thing I've done, was it comes out quite a way like this. So I'll just tuck that underneath because I don't want it getting caught into the zips. 
And the reason is you can open it quickly and pull it straight out quick. Now all I've done with these, as I said, there's a lot of air in these and it bolts up which makes it quite hard to pack. Now all I've done is if you look where the seal is there, I'll put a tiny little pin prick just inside, squashed all of the air out and just put a blob of super glue on it to seal it back up again. So no germs and nasty stuff's got inside there. All the air's got out of there and it's sealed up. It's like it's vacuum sealed really to save more space. Um, that's just a 12 centimeter by 12 centimeter um, sterile dressing basically. I cover all sorts of um, minor cuts as it were. Also I've got two. Move along underneath the bandage, sorry, these um, straps here. Basically exactly the same, but a larger one. That this is like a foot and a half square, 18, sorry, a foot and a half square, 18 centimeters by 18 centimeters. Quite big, it's gonna mop up a lot of blood. Again, I have two of these. Right, let's turn this around. Right, and I have, it's good that these straps are there to keep everything from getting mixed up and rubbing together. It's very, very handy. These are quite good. It's um, basically 99.9% .9 really, really good quality alcohol hand cleaner, really. So you can either mix it with water or just use it neat and it will just kill most of the bugs that's going to be on your hands. Pretty funky colour label as well. <laughs> it's got a two hour protection. I don't know about that, but. It's a good thing nonetheless, and you should have it in your first aid kit. Um, moving along, you've got some alcohol-free wipes, very important. I've got alcohol wipes as well, but it's nice to have a choice. I mean, if it's really, really painful area, the last thing you want is to stick a load of alcohol in it. It'll do a similar job in uh, keeping the wound area nice and clean. And also, if that wants to come out, very, very strong quality. It's micro pull tape, and you're gonna tape up dressings together, and it really sticks really well. If you're hairy as well, it's just gonna go over you, and be warned, because <laughs> it's gonna take your hair off as well. And all I've done was I just folded the back over there, just for quick access, really. So, that's an essential for doing your dressings. Moving along, the same sort of um, dressing, well, an iPad, really, if you've got like a bad eye. You can just tape yourself up with this. Again, all the same principles, all the air has been taken out of there and sealed up. And again, folded under so it doesn't catch in a zip. So flip it out, pull it out, quick release. Plasters. Now, <laughs> okay, plasters do have their place and they're a very, very good bit of kit. And of course, they're all sterile. And these are just your basic, you know, shape plasters really. All waterproof, all sealed up inside, so as sterile as sterile can be. Very importantly, obviously, rubber gloves. I've got two pairs here, and these are actual large, which fits my hand. There's no point getting the small and medium ones. If they're too tight, you can put one in a hurry and rip them. They're just no good. So get the size that actually fits you and you feel comfortable with. And these are actually from the NHS, so they're quite good quality ones. So I managed to get myself some of those. And actually, let's go through this bit first. Now these are pre-injection swab, and these are 78% IPA, which is isopropyl alcohol. And um, very, very good for getting all of the nasty germs off. Just an alcohol swab, really. I've got loads of these, because they're so small. And to be honest, the, the pads are like, like that. They're tiny, so hence a big, nice wad of them there. So that's always a handy thing to have in your first aid kit. And also this, I can't stress how important it is to get your hands on some of these. Saline solution, and these are absolutely bloody lifesavers. Recently, um, I was out of um, a few friends, and got a bit carried away with a machete, and it went straight into my shin, got a half inch cut, and it just bled and bled and bled. I just got one of these, I mean luckily I had one in my little backy tin, first aid kit at the time, but now it's just been upgraded as you can see. Just got one of these and just squirted about a third of it on there. Perfectly clean, no problem. Then it started pumping out blood again. Squirted some more on, nice and clean, pumping out blood again. So I just emptied a whole vial and it's really thoroughly cleaned the area and it really does. I mean, you haven't got to actually touch yourself of it, like the swabs. You can just squirt it all over the area. But make sure you've got something to hand quickly to put on the wound. I mean, you can actually use a panty liner, which is, <laughs> 
it's a, an interesting idea. It's not sterile, but it does a very, very good job in mopping up the blood. And also, it's not going to take up a lot of room because they're quite thin. So a saline solution, you must have. You really must. Right, and this is where the pack gets interesting. I mean, you won't believe the amount of things that you can get in here. And here, I have these. These are really good. If you burn yourself, when I mean, obviously you're out in the woods and you're doing fires and things, things can get hot, you can burn yourself very easily. You know, you can protect yourself wearing gloves, but you never know. So it's a good idea to squirt loads of gel all over the burn and that's gonna calm it down big style. So always a good thing to have. They're relatively cheap on eBay as well, so you can get all of some of them. Wow, so I've got so much in there, you just wouldn't believe it. Now these, loads more plasters. But these are like, um, they're a different size and different shape. But that's what you think, they're not plasters. These are actually sutures, stick on sutures. I don't know if you can see the shape of it in there. But basically if you've got a nice big slash and you clean yourself up with the old saline solution and you can just whack these straight on, these will stick on saline applied skin. Pretty good. And I've got two different sizes in there. I've just got the medium ones and the small ones. So get yourself some stick on the stitches, they're really good. And that being the medium ones, and these being the smaller ones, obviously for smaller wounds. Now I've got quite a lot of those. And even though the expiry date says 2014 on there, you know, if they're kept out of sunlight and you look after them and don't get them wet and all the rest of it, you know, there's no reason why you can't stick another three years onto that, maybe even more. So, another good thing to have. Now, these are really, really good. My wife just recently had an operation on her wrist. And these dressings are absolutely spot on. If you can find these online, grab them. They really do stick and stay stuck for days. So, if you've got like a nasty, serious wound and you don't want any infections, you're out in the rain and the mud and virus disease and all the rest of it. That will really suit, seal your wound up, no problem at all. And another, a larger size sticky dressing. It's good to have a variety of um, sizes and shapes because you really don't know what wound you're going to get, so it's best to cover all of them really. Super glue, I know it's a bit of a joke, but using Vietnam and proved very effective. And it does actually work. A friend of mine on the ranges years ago actually cut himself. <laughs> trying to under a tin of baked beans from his ration pack and it is a quite a nasty cut and we just didn't have time to go through all his first aid kit he just pulled it out cleaned the wound off and just squared it on and just held it together like that and the blood just sort of went a bit pinky and it sort of stopped and it just sealed up lovely and a few days later you know you can just peel all the mucky bits off and the wound seems to stick so super glue really does work and it's such a small thing you can't really say no so in the first aid kit it goes now this is quite an interesting idea. A friend of mine on YouTube, Gareth BKW, we've been talking recently online, um, if you have to do the Rambo thing, you've got to sew yourself up. Now it's all well and good, but you do need to wax line your thread. If you've got cotton threads, um, you heat the candle up, and you get it all nice and waxy, and you just run your candle thread, which is on a basic sewing kit in there, and it's got the needles, nice little thing to have really. It takes out no room, I couldn't say no really. Well, and I've been looking at proper suture needles and they're very expensive, so in the meantime, if you really, really have to, I hope I never have to, but if you do, it's there. And obviously you just line the um, the wax, sorry, the, the um, thread in wax and just sew yourself up. And of course, it's always nice to have a lighter at hand because, you know, if this is all you've got, Oh God, I we could do with a lighter or something to heat the, the candle and the rest of it. There it is, so it all stays in the same bag, all nice and waterproof in its own. So that goes in there. And of course, it's a good idea to have one of these. It doesn't take up a lot of room. And if you've got a casualty, hypothermic maybe, this is spot on for just keeping them warm until help arrives maybe. Uh, and that will last for quite a while if you look after them. If you would be careful and try not to punch them, you know, that could save your life and it's something so small and lightweight. You shouldn't really overlook it. So that's gone in there. Now, this is where it gets a bit serious. These are actually issued to the Special Forces, if I can open it up. 
don't know if you can see that. There, there it is. It's a chest seal. So if you've got a sucking chest wound, you just put that on. You've got the gauzy bit there to mop up the blood, and you've got the big seal all the way around it and, and the valve closure in the middle. That is perfect. I mean, you can just picture yourself. You, you're rolling down the bone, a slope in the woods or something. You were tumbling out of control, your Birkins on your back. I mean, just think about it. You know, there's a lot of trees and obstacles and nasty, spiky things everywhere. And God forbid you land on a tree or a branch sticking out and it goes right through your chest into your lungs. You ain't gonna last very long. If you could just whip this out and stick it on, it could give you the vital moments to make a mobile phone call, clean yourself up, try and calm yourself down and get yourself together. You know, this will at least buy you time. Or similarly, if a friend has a bad accident like that, you could just zip this out and straight on there and it will stop the, the bubbling and all the air escaping through the lungs. So for the price of it, two pound, three pound on eBay. There's a guy selling them from the SAS at the moment. So you might be lucky, get yourself one. So of course, they take out no room, of course, you can fold it up. So that had to go in there really. So that's the mesh um, section there, all emptied out. And of course, you can see these straps, they're really, really good quality stuff, they're really strong. They're double strapped everywhere, so the possibilities are so many. You've even got hooks there to put a carrying handle over the whole thing. Now, you turn it around, and this section has a little zip. And inside here, we're gonna have proper stainless steel scissors. And if you notice, you've got one sharpie end and one rounded end. Well, you pretty much guess what it's for, for dressings and for cutting, really. For cutting the old micropore tape, for example. Stainless steel, so they're not gonna rust, so you don't need to worry about keeping them oiled and all the rest of it and contamination. And they're brand new, and they're absolutely very, very sharp indeed. So that's good. Always nice to have scissors at hand. Um, we have your standard issue from the ration packs, British Army water purification tablets. If you're really in bad trouble and you need to sterilize water quickly and you haven't got time to boil it, that's what you need. And they're so small, obviously, I mean, why not? So that goes in the first aid kit. And also, body temperature changes. Salt, just table salt for heat exhaustion. Very important. You can pick these up anywhere for free, really. So just put them in your first aid kit. Forget about them, they're always there. So it's a must have for something that's free. I mean, you must do it. Goes in there. And inside here, we have a nice little range of um, medication, really. When I've done my back in a while ago, I really, really milked it. And I kept going back and saying, the painkillers aren't strong enough. And they kept upgrading my, my tablets to higher strengths. And eventually end up with these. I don't know if you can see those, Sulfadol. They are very, very good. I mean, these actually work for me. They might not work for you. But I'm suggesting, you know, try and fool your doctor if you can. If you do do your back in, make it out there. It's so painful. You're walking around the surgery and you're hunchbacked over and you're, you're crying and all the rest of it. The chances are it'll probably issue something a little bit stronger than you actually need. Now, these are very important to have. I and mean, as I say, when I've done my leg with a machete recently, and I couldn't sleep at night because my leg was just throbbing like hell. This just stopped the throbbing within 20 minutes. So it gets out some really strong painkillers. They're on prescription. You, you probably won't get them over the counter, but you know, be crazy and just find new ideas to get strong drugs. <laughs> so moving along. Cocodamol, another strong um, painkilling tablet. So I've got loads of these. It doesn't matter if they're out of date. As I say, if you look after them, there's no reason why they can't last a few years past. So very, very good for pain relief, obviously. So I've got a double pack there. There's loads. Also some more water for purification tablets in the bag. And what house are we here? These are very, very good. I can recommend these. You can buy these online, antihistamine, so you get bitten or you get hay fever or something nasty. These are bob on, and that's going to stop the itching straight away. So you've got one tablet pass per day there, so <laughs> you've got a few there. And of course, take up no room, they're very lightweight. And also these. Now you may laugh, but believe you me, if you're out in the woods and you've eaten bad fungus or something, and you've got the squits, ha! <laughs> These are incredible, the Imodium Plus. The Imodiums aren't too bad, but the Plus ones are fantastic. 
You have one of these and you ain't gonna dump for 48 hours from the second you take them, they're that good. So of course that's gonna give you time to get to a hospital maybe or whatever else. It just buys you time like most of um, first aid equipment does. It buys you time, which is vital. So don't underestimate it. Make sure you've got some crap tabs in the bag. And likewise, the other way around, you've got to think of these things. Senecot. If you're bunged up and you haven't had a poo for three days, they'll clean you straight out. They're the extra strong ones, I think they were, and they actually do work. <laughs> Believe you me, if you've got no access to fruit or anything like that, that'll sort you out. And also a nice little pair of tweezers. They actually come with the scissors, all stainless steel. And um, obviously, if you've got, um, I don't know, splinters or you've got a tick or something, that's perfect for what you need. Really, really good idea. It takes out no room when it's just as tiny. Of course, stainless steel, which is always a good thing to have. I always recommend you get some of these as well. A quick shot of energy, glucose, I mean, there's loads in there. That's really gonna uh, help out most people for all reasons. You can actually chew these up and have them with water to provide like an isotonic option. All good ideas. And of course, it doesn't take up too much room. It doesn't weigh too much. So, they're good and therefore getting some energy back into you. I've got a couple of these actually, they arrived today. So if you need to rehydrate, there's some um, powders in there, you just mix up with some water. And these are orange flavoured, and if you're seriously dehydrated, you know, a few mouthfuls of water ain't gonna do it, but if you've got a few mouthfuls of water with this, that's really gonna um, stand you in good stead. So try and get those online, they're really, really good. I've tried and tested these and they actually do work. Spot on piece of kit. And that is more or less it. The pouch is empty apart from the torch, obviously. So if there's anything you think I should add in there, I mean, I've still got some room in there, believe it or not. I mean, you can get a lot of stuff in there. You really wouldn't believe. I'm gonna lay it all out and show you what goes in there. You'd be surprised. Now just look at it all. It's incredible, really, how it can all fit in that little pouch. It really can. It's just beggar's belief, really, if you see it all laid out like this. They all fits in that pouch. Pretty clever really isn't it, when you consider it. As I say that, that fits perfectly in the front pouch of the 120 litre British Army PLCE Bourbon. And with room to spare underneath. Or well, in the amount of room underneath you could probably fit about 100 cigarettes. You know a pack of five 20 packs cartons. That sort of size really underneath it. So there's loads of room in there. And of course you know, they're really, really strong. And it's a great design. I mean, I just clipped my little um, torch onto that. So, you know, if God forbid it is dark and something bad happens, you've got at least a fighting chance if you've lost your torch or whatever. And uh, I don't even know if I can get it all in. Oh, man. I'm struggling to get all that in. And it's pretty good. Of course, there's bound to be a few things that I've, I may have missed out. So if anyone could um, have any ideas of what else I could put in there. I mean, you know, serious, no silly things like, I don't know, a pair of quality Jackson's fongs or something. You know, <laughs> you know anything's cool, buddy. Just um, PM me if you think I'm missing out on some stuff because, you know, we're all here to learn. And I am hope, you know, of... Um, Maybe someone else learn a few things as well. Maybe some things they haven't got an air first aid kit, which are never considered. I like to cover all my options because, you know, there's multiple scenarios of things that can happen to you on your own when you're out and about in the woods or whatever, doing outdoor pursuits. So it's a really good idea to make sure you've got an half decent kit like this. I mean, there are some thousand times better than this. There really are. I mean, I'd like to put um, morphine on there, some... Um, syringes full of local anesthetic, things like that, you know, some suture needles and stuff like that. And maybe a scalpel and, you know, safety pins. You know, the list could just go on and on and on, but it's just where I am. 
Sorry, excuse me. This is where I am at the moment. So, you know, any ideas, just um, message me or comment me or whatever you want to do. So I hope you've learned something and, um, well, thanks for watching. Cheers, guys.